tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, today we'll exploit a Bifrost Graph preset. An example in Bifrost Graph, we just analyze it and uh, make a few tweaks. This, by the way, is Cologne Cathedral, and I wish you much fun with this 5 or 10 minute tutorial. We'll start with the Bifrost Graph example in the Bifrost Graph browser. Why Bifrost Graph? Because here it's called Bifrost Graph. Sometimes it's only abbreviated with BIF, B I F. So the Bifrost browser. Um, you need the current version and we're currently in summer 2021 and uh, you, I guess you know how to install that it's free it comes with it's generically built into Maya and uh, in the settings preferences in the plugin manager you can check the version number you have whatever now I open this and I see several sections and in previous editions of the Bifrost browser you saw much less and today we'll talk about this field because I find it so aesthetically pleasing double click or import now the Bifrost Graph editor opens and when I press the key L I see the whole layout it looks quite intimidating if you're not familiar with the visual programming and uh, don't worry we don't need to dive into this and make new connections or whatever but what we see in the scene is this it doesn't do anything it's just sitting there and it's beautiful by itself these are Bifrost graph strands how beautiful now we want the strands to be happening on the geometry which we provide and um, for example I create a letter by clicking and I'm in polygon modeling I click on the T here for text and uh, here I have type 1 and I just delete this so I have only the number 3 actually and uh, I want to make it smaller and under geometry you find deformable type and when you click here on deformable type you get divisions at the front let's undo this you see this is just a one face here in the in the polygon terminology and when I click here deformable type we have 20 now sort of maximum edge divisions is 20 okay so uh, this is our starting point now I go to the side window and select the faces with the right mouse button in component mode and I delete all these faces so only the ones at the front remain right mouse click back to object mode now I have the three and I want this structure to happen on the three how do I do this so let's reopen the Bifrost graph editor if you don't find it let me close it you find it under Windows Bifrost graph editor and it reopens with this empty field click on the plus icon and here you find the flat hurricane noise shape so it's back here again and when you press L you see the whole layout when we follow this graph from it always reads from left to right uh, the input is here and the output is uh, on the very right side uh, it starts with create a mesh plane this is the mesh plane where this happens this is the, the ground here we want to have the three and for that we middle mouse drag the type mesh one middle mouse drag it into this scene here into the editor and you see that the create mesh plane the plane on the floor uh, feeds into the input of a pass mesh node don't worry what that does we just substitute this with our mesh 
So we feed it into the input and the other input connection will be deleted. So the create mesh plane is obsolete, we can delete it now. And when you look at the scene, you see that we have these strands now developing on the letter 3, actually on the number 3. But not really very many and in order to modify that we'll look at several nodes in that flow graph. And before we do this we hide the type mesh with the letter H and on the keyboard and here we see the structure of the strands. Now what can we do about it? We have the, uh, the first one is the pass mesh node and here you see nothing can be modified. It is, I know the purpose of this node, um, let's not get into this. The fractal noise field is much more interesting for us because it has parameters here, the magnitude for example. And let me uh, put this a little bit lower down and let's have a look at the three. And when I change the magnitude from one to four, for example, I get a much more intense motion of our structures. The uh, numeric or number of frequencies, well, when I change this from three to 10, I get even more fractal noise in the, these structures. And you can have a look at uh, all the other parameters you can change here. Now, we've visited the fractal noise field. Let's go to the vector field. The vector field has a value of 0, 1, 0. So what does that mean for R3? Well, it means, well, I'll show you. Uh, let us delete the 1 and have a look here. Now the fractal works in all dimensions. When we type in 1 here in the x dimension, we see that uh, the structures develop only in the x direction. So let's go for 0, so we have a nice distribution in all dimensions. This is what we can do with a vector field. We have a scalar field which has a value of 0 0.4. What does it do? How about changing 0 0.4 to 20? It gives us much more turbulence, so to say. Let's go to the hurricane noise. The hurricane noise has nothing for us to put into here. Set the strand size profile. But how about that? It is a node which controls with a the strands with a factor and a profile. So it's currently set to 0 0.003. How about setting it to 0 0.1? You see that the strokes get very thick now. Now they are thinner, which is like a compromise. Uh, here you can change the profile. This is visible once you get really close to the objects. When you lower this, it is thicker at the beginning and at the end than in the middle. And now it's thicker in the middle. And this is what this node is about. When we continue to the set Arnold strand settings, you obviously know that uh, this has to do with the rendering and um, not with the creation of these structures. It has a value node here which goes into the emission color so this is about color when I change the value of uh, the R it's RGB here actually to 3 nothing changes when you render it it's different so let's uh, create a light a sky dome light we make it invisible in the camera view so I lower this slider to 0 and I don't want to see the light in the scene, that's why I uncheck it here. And I go to Arnold as the rendering, viewport rendering option. And now I see nothing. But when I type in one, I see it all in red. And now in yellow, 
and now in white because it's um, it's RGB. Well, now you know how to approach such an example. You dive into one node after the other, see what can be done with it in terms of changing parameters and that graph was certainly not my invention. I couldn't invent such a thing, but developed by the Bifrost graph team in Toronto, the headquarter of uh, Maya developers. And uh, I send them my warm greetings, especially to Duncan Brinsmeet, who invented many of these things already 20 years ago, and he's still so active. Bye bye now. <laughs>